Hi everyone, I hope you're all doing well. As promised, I'm going to be starting uh, to do book reviews. This is not something I'm going to be doing, I would say, on a daily basis or on a weekly basis. When I read a book, I'll definitely share my insights with you guys. This is by no means a book club. You don't have to read along. I just thought I would, I don't know, uh, give you my opinion of the books I read and maybe if you've thought about reading it, it'll you know, give you a different perspective of it or incite you to, to read it or maybe make you decide, no, nah, I don't want to read that. So that's it. I am definitely not pretending to be a book connoisseur. I am not a book snob. I don't have a favorite author. Um, there, I haven't, uh, I don't know, I, I'm not big on saying, oh, I've read this or I've read that at all. I'm just sharing. Whenever I read a book, I will definitely come on. It'll just be something fun to do and hopefully we'll get something out of it. So the first one that I'm going to do is um, a book called Princess. The True Story of Life Inside Saudi Arabia's Royal Family. It's written by Jean Sasson and it's published by Bantam Books. Uh, this one was published in 93, I believe. The author is a British lady who's lived in Saudi Arabia for, Saudi Arabia for about eight years. She's befriended a lot of Saudi women, and in this instance, she's met a member of the royal family. Uh, and uh, the, this princess, member of the royal family, pretty much told Jean Sasson her life story, and Jean Sasson has written it. It's written in the first, first person, so it's not a description of this woman's life, but in essence, uh, ghost-written, I guess. Um, so that's it. So, what I can tell you to start off, just about the author in case you're curious, she's also written a book called The Rape of Kuwait, and she's written another one called Daughters of Arabia, which is a follow-up to this about um, Sultana's two daughters. Uh, this book was named, I'm sorry, I'm reading from my notes, this book was named um, the be one of the best 500 books for uh, women, written by women, and that's by the Reader's Guide for Women's Studies. And it's filled with tons of little things, like even if you're not into reading biographies or anything like that, if you don't know much about Saudi Arabia and you're curious to know how the royals live, or just curious in general, I would definitely suggest picking it up. It's filled with little tidbits, like for example, um, uh, at one point it was talking about education and it was saying how 58% of women, of, of university grads in in Saudi Arabia are women, but only 6% make up the workforce. Like, that just really makes you think about how many educated women are there and, and you know, whose society is really rely, uh, relying on. But anyways, that's a whole other discussion for another day. And I want to emphasize that I don't, I didn't go into this with a preconceived notion. I absolutely don't believe that every woman in Saudi Arabia has this experience. I absolutely don't believe that every man in Saudi Arabia is, um, chauvinistic or has, you know, some kind of backward expectation of women. I, I definitely think that in every culture, every religion, every country, every background, there's good people, there's bad people, and you just make do with what you got. So in no way am I saying that this represents life in Saudi Arabia at all. I think this represents a story of one woman, and it could be the story of any woman. Yeah, minus being a royal, the her story, her life story, her pains, her joys, her desire for freedom, uh, her love of family, her desire for marriage, her love for her daughters. This is something that if you're a woman, if you have children, if you have any of these things in your life, you would probably enjoy reading this because it's just a different and cool perspective. Um, what else can I tell you about it? I'll go back to my notes. Yeah, so uh, just to tell you a bit, it starts off, if you're not familiar with Saudi royals, it kind of explains the, the House of Saad and, and um, goes into a bit of the history about how Saudi Arabia came to be, who the royals are, how they gained power. Um, talks about her childhood, her life in a home with ten sisters and one brother, in a home where um, men rule where her brother, she says, is treated like God, where I think at one point she's trying to eat an apple or wanted an apple and it was taken away and given to her brother. Um, so yeah, just the superiority of, of men, even that she, experienced, like, that she experienced that in her childhood and her desperate need to have her father's love. 
it, it goes into life as an adolescent. It talks about what it's like to get your period uh, in that kind of society where automatically when you get your period, you're considered a woman, you're made to veil and cover yourself. You're no long, longer allowed to play with your male cousins or any boys. Um, so I don't know, it's just interesting because that's just so not how it's treated for us back in the West, you know? Uh, it talks about her arranged marriage. Um, she's actually one of the lucky ones. She loves her husband. Uh, she, you know, she goes into the s stories about her sisters and relatives and cousin. Some of them are really, really horrific and, and stand by what we hear in the news. And there's other stories of, you know, amazing women overcoming lots of obstacles. Uh, what else? So that's pretty much it. I don't want to give too much of it away, but it's lots of fun to read. It definitely is life inside the gilded walls. Um, I'm not, again, I'm not saying that every woman lives like this because she's clearly a royal. They've got servants from the time they're babies. Um, houses everywhere, um, an abundance of jewels and cars and huge homes. But at the same time, I found it insightful and interesting. And I mean, I wouldn't say it's a page turner. I'm not, I'm not going to say that you cannot put this down, but you definitely want to read it and want to finish it. And I don't think that it's a book that, not one of those books you could leave unread. So did I say everything I want to say about it? Yeah, so that's it. That's it for this book. I'm going to try not to talk too long on these things. I'm already at six minutes. So let me know what you thought um, of this book review, or let me know if you've read this. I, I'm, I'm going to try not to go too much into the story because it'll give too much away, but I think based on what I said, you can decide, maybe, maybe not, if you're interested in, in reading it. So that's it. I hope you enjoyed this first one. Um, the next couple, I think I know what I'm going to be doing, but I'll leave that as a surprise. So that's it, folks. Let me know what you think. Take care. Bye.